this meditation, you really have to have patience with yourself. You have to realize it's taken many, many years and sometimes lifetimes to get into the condition we're in. And it's not going to go away in one or two classes. You know, we have to literally learn how to recondition our inner life, change our inner life, you know, get more focus, get more balance. And it takes time to do this. It's not going to happen in two classes, 10 classes. It really takes time. It's taken a lifetime to get into the condition we are in. And we're not going to get out of it so quickly. But in the continuance of the work, we transform our inner life slowly, gradually, which is the way it should be. Because transformation is slow and gradual and the transformation will be permanent. And it opens us to a much higher and you know, more transcendental way of looking at life. You know, I learned years ago that, you know, we have one kind of logic and the universe, God's higher energy, it has a logic completely different than anything human beings can understand. <clears throat> and eventually we stop trying to understand it. We just open it so it becomes living experience. We live in the moment we are. You know, we're not living in our head, going from the past to the future to the <clears throat> making ourselves crazy. <clears throat> so please have patience with yourself and don't expect, you know, in one, two, three, ten classes to suddenly become enlightened. It doesn't happen that way. It's a slow, gradual transformation of one's inner life. And it should be that way because then it's permanent. You understand when things happen too quickly, they come, they go, <coughs> they come <laughs> and we bounce to the next thing and the next thing. So I'm asking you, have a little patience. I mean, when I first started doing this, I had to have a lot of patience because I was really pretty messed up young man. And it took a lot of patience and a lot of time to get to a place in myself where <coughs> this energy transformed me and it really started to work in a deeply profound way. So I'll have a meditation. And if anyone has a question, and after the class, I will do my best to try and answer it. Everyone, does anyone have a question you would like to ask? It's good to be quiet like this and really focused inside and and just, you know, not rummaging around in the noise in the head and emotions and, and kind of giving ourselves a break because we so often get caught up in all the tension inside that it keeps us from ever truly tapping, you know, this higher creative energy. And in the meditation, suddenly that tension goes away. We, there's quiet, there's, you know, when people pass on and they die, they always say, rest in peace. I think they have it wrong. They should say, live in peace, you know? I mean, we're born here to learn how to live in peace, make peace with ourselves, learn how to master all the things inside us that cause disruption and chaos and a lot of tension. And I think 
you know, the universe provides techniques to do this. And, uh, you know, I'm just infinitely grateful because I remember what my mind used to be like. <laughs> and, I mean, just the very thought of going back to living that way is enough to make me work really deeply on myself. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? <laughs> shouldn't be rest in peace, it should be live in peace. And if you live in peace, you're <clears throat> certainly going to rest in peace. Does anyone have a question? This is Jillian. It may be a rhetorical question, but why is it so much easier to be compassionate and see the things that would benefit others as it is to, to find compassion for ourselves? You know, <clears throat> there's an element of compassion where you can reach out into the objective world and see the suffering of other people. <clears throat> And it affects you and you bring a level of compassion to the situation. But real compassion has to do with service. It has to do with an unconditional force of love inside a human being. <clears throat> and it really has to do with learning how to like and love oneself. To accept the fact that we are worthy of having wonderful lives. We're worthy of being happy people. We're worthy of being connected to God. Understand? And when that level of experience comes to a human being, then there's real compassion. Because then your whole life evolves around serving a higher energy in the universe. And I don't mean religion. You understand? I'm not talking about dogma, doctrine, religion you know, having to convert people. I mean, that's not compassion. I'm talking about a love that unconditionally comes out of the human heart. And that love starts with the capacity to really love and like ourselves. We're not born here to be miserably unhappy all the time. That's a lot of work because the ultimate mystery for all of us is the self. Everybody, you know, they always say, know yourself, you know? Well, years ago, I realized that's an impossibility to completely know myself. What's possible is to transform myself. What it's, what's possible is to fix my inner life, to get grounded, to get my heart open, to get my mind quiet. That's possible. But the self is so mysterious and it's so beyond all human comprehension that the act of kind of it's an absurdity to try to want to get to know oneself, but to get grounded, to get open, to be able to experience God's energy flowing through us, to be able to have compassion. That has nothing to do with knowing yourself. It has to do with truly fixing all the problems inside developing a chakra system that is capable of doing what I'm talking about. Then you don't have to know yourself because your experience every day is, you know, it's a living expression of higher energy in the universe. And who in there, who could ever conceive knowing God? The energy of spirit, the energy of higher energy is so beyond all human comprehension. But we can experience that. We can become a living example of what it means to surrender so deeply that the energy of the universe guides our life. We can live in the moment. You understand? It's, and then you don't have to know yourself. You don't have to. You just live. 
understand we become a child of God, you know, it's, it's just an incredible transformation of how we're taught to live by most of our societies, you know? And I think to me, it's just an incredible way to live. It certainly takes a huge burden off you, you know? This know thyself burden, you don't have to, you just open and get strong and become, live in the moment. You know? <laughs> there can't be anything more miraculous than that, to be able to live your life in the now. You know, like Ram Dass said, be here now. You know, I mean, it's really the whole key to a successful life. And then all of this higher energy comes and it brings to you whatever your karma is. If you need to have, you know, a relationship, it'll bring that. If it, you need to make money, it'll bring that. If you, need, if you need all these things in order to work out your karma, they all come. At the same time, we're not attached to any of it. It doesn't have us. It doesn't suck our lives out of us. You know, our lives are connection with spirit. And yet we begin to see the magnificence of what it means to be living in this world. We can look past all the craziness and the politics and the, you know, pandemics and all this stuff that goes on, you know? At the same time, we have a lot of compassion for the suffering of people. I mean, frankly, anyone on the planet Earth would be welcome to come to these meditation classes. Anyone. Right now, there's about 20 people here. But I'm not kidding you. And I understand what it can do for people. I also understand not everybody's ready for it. But if, if only, I would have to grow to be able to do this. And I'd be very happy to grow like that, to be able to do this. Unconditional love, you know, in the ability to connect with people and to have compassion for the incredible suffering that goes on in this world. And most of the suffering has completely to do with a lack of consciousness, ego, tension, being right, having to have an image of oneself and who it's I am, you know? Stuart, it's Jillian again. Yes. I feel like I have a great, compa uh, a great capacity for love, but why can it be so hard to make that um, love? Why is it so hard to sometimes love yourself when you have such great capacity. Jillian, that's what you're here to learn. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> you know, Thanks. It, it takes time to do this. You know, it takes time to learn how to do what you're asking. It really does. You got to have patience. You have to have spiritual maturity inside. You have to have a really highly developed chakra system. And that takes time so that you don't spend your day beating yourself up, you know, and just have patience. I started out this class with having patience because all of these things come. They don't come in a day or two or a week or a month. They come, they come a step at a time. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, the first person we truly have to learn to love is ourselves. Because if you don't truly learn to love yourself, uh, it's going to be very difficult to unconditionally love other human beings. You know, once we get that down and our hearts open and we, we get up in the morning and, you know, yeah, I'm worthy of having an incredible life. <clears throat> So that is what we transmit to other people. <clears throat> and then we have patience for other people's nonsense, tension, bullshit, you know, that people always, and you realize everyone's suffering. I 
and we're not offended by somebody else's you know, tension, you know, and that's a very big one to learn how to do, not to be offended <coughs> by other people's, you know, lack of consciousness. Does anyone else have a question? Okay. There'll be another class on, on Thursday. <laughs> and uh, God bless you all. Thank you for being here, for doing this. God bless you too. You too. I have people from literally all over the world here, you know, and I, I find this a joy to come and do this three. I wish it could be seven times a week, but I'm not sure I would survive seven times <laughs> a week. <laughs> Doing this with two different classes, it would be 14 classes a week. It would be too much. But bless you all and thank you. And uh, I'm hoping to see you all on, on Thursday. Also, if you know people that want to come, they're welcome. You know, I mean, hopefully they can work, learn how to work out a lot of the problems they have with their lives. So. <coughs> maybe, <coughs> excuse me, they'd be very welcome to come and to, you know, just have them get in touch with me and I can arrange for them to learn the breathing exercise. So bless you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. everybody on Thursday. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day.